Welcome back everyone to more X4 Foundations. And this is a game we covered quite a bit here on the channel upon its initial release a few years ago. We did a lot of gameplay, we did some guides about getting started, making money. We also did some mod spotlights. We did a lot with this game. I absolutely love this game. In fact, have hundreds of hours of gameplay invested in it. So why are we back today? Well, there have been since our initial coverage there have been two DLCs released and one that should be released very soon. So we're here today to get started using one of those DLCs, Cradle of Humanity, and prepare ourselves to transition right into the new DLC which is Tides of Avarice whenever it is released again probably pretty soon, at least within a month or two. So I would love nothing more than to be able to use both existing DLCs, Cradle of Humanity and Split Vendetta, but unfortunately, I just don't think my computer can take it. I, I did a test run trying to see if it would work, and it just, there's too much stuttering in the game, and essentially, the game is just overloading the PC. With both of the DLCs installed, plus the default content, there is simply so many races and factions and stations and ships and you name it. There's just too much information for my now six years or so old PC to handle. Uh, so my PC is about six years old, has an i5 in it and a 1070 graphics card so the graphics card is perfectly fine i don't have any issues with the graphics in game but everything else all the calculations that the game is doing was simply too much so we're going to pare that down a little bit and we're going to do a custom game start using cradle of humanity and we're going to see how far we can get before the release of tides of avarice so i think this is going to be a lot of fun there's so much to do within this game there's a main story mission of sorts and then there are so many side stories that you can choose to get involved with. But our story is going to be very simple. We want to create our own dynasty within the game. We want to create a powerhouse of a faction within the game, both from an economic sense, by making tons and tons of money, lots of raw materials, lots of products and services, but then also from the military perspective. If we have enough time before the release of Tides of Avarice, I want to get into a full-scale attack on the Xenon and see how much damage we can do to their very existence. I have no idea how far we'll be able to go or how successful we'll be, but I do know it's going to be a lot of fun to try. So now, with that in mind, let's hop into a new game and take a look at the custom start that I have created. Let's talk for a moment about why we're using a custom game start that I have configured as opposed to one of the default options available by the developers. And essentially it's about jumping straight into the fun of the gameplay as I see it. Obviously all of this is going to be personal preference, but for me there are a lot of things early on in the game that have become just a grind. Things that I have done a million times over after several hundred hours in the game that I just want to skip by at this point. Things such as earning some of those initial credits so that we can buy our first ships and get started either mining or trading. I'd like to bypass that as well as some of that initial main story mission that once again I have done seemingly a million times over in this game. So we're going to be skipping by some of that. However, if you're interested in that, if you're brand new to X4 Foundations, then by all means, check out my previous content on X4 where we cover exactly those things that we're going to be skipping today. Some of the early game stuff, some of the main story mission, all of those we've done before here on the channel. So now we're going to jump straight into the fun. So I've already got my custom game loaded up and let's take a look at some of the basics. So we start out, I've already got my name in here. We're going to be using the Terran Male uh, number two model for the game. Now, as far as blueprints, we don't start out with any other than the basic dock area, and you'll see why we have that one here in just a moment. Let's move on to the starting ship. And this is the Rapier, which is a Terran vessel. And you can see I've already named it so that it will show up specifically at the top of my ship's list. And the reason I've done this is because it is a very 
fast scout ship. And one of the first things we're going to do in game is put down a lot of satellites for our trading operation and really build our network. And the rapier is going to be perfect for that. Also, if you're using one of the default Terran starts for the Pioneers, this is the vessel that you start out with. And I really like this ship. So we move on to property and you can see we have the HQ. Now within the HQ, that's pretty much it. Okay, I've already named it and I've changed the location. We are going to start in Silent Witness 11. So if you're not familiar with the map, I have gone ahead and unlocked for the purposes of our uh, modified game start pretty much everything as far as the entire map because I want us to focus on building rather than having to f seek out and find all of the different uh, parts of the map. And this also allows me to do something that I have always enjoyed doing, and that is get our HQ out of the starting sector. So now I've moved it to Silent Witness 11, and the reason I've done that is because it's not currently really occupied by anyone. So it gives us a fresh start, and we can choose to really expand within that sector. Now, as far as the manager there, I don't care what race they are. Any race is perfectly fine, and I've not started them out with really any skill set. So we'll have to build that as we move along. Beyond that, we don't have any other stations, no other uh, ships. So let's move on to the universe. This is what I was talking about, about sectors. I have opened up the entire map. That's going to be a lot of fun because, again, we skip that stage where you have to go find everything and all the jump gates we're going to skip by that. Again, if you're interested in that, there's certainly gameplay available that will show that. But for us, we're going to jump straight to the fun part, the part that I really enjoy. And of course, we're going to have the highways on. We definitely need those. Makes things so much better when you can uh, make travel a good bit faster. But I also understand that there are a lot of people who, un who enjoy playing with the highways off. And I can understand that as well. But for us, we're definitely going to have those highways on, and all of the sectors are going to be known from the start. However, we won't have any knowledge about what's going on within them. We'll have to do that on our own. Faction relations. I hadn't even really taken a look at very much in here because the default is going to be just fine with me. Now, if you use one of the uh, developer-provided default starts, you're going to have bonuses in here and maybe some negatives as well. But, for example, if you choose one of the Terran starts, then you'll have a bonus to the Cigars Pioneers as well as the Terran faction. So the Terran Protectorate, that is going to be a huge one. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change this. I'm going to put them at a zero. Okay, that's one change I wanted to make with you guys because... I don't really want to start with any enemies other than the normal ones, the pirate factions, the Xenon, and so forth. But other than that, everybody is pretty much neutral, and that means an important part of our gameplay is going to be building our reputation. All right, and the story states, here is where, again, if you're new to X4, this has already been covered in my previous gameplay. And we're going to start out with the HQ and staff of the HQ with just Bosata. Now, there, is, there are states beyond that. However, this is as far as I've ever gotten in the game with the main story. So that's where we're starting. Anything we want to do beyond that and any of these uh, sort of side stories within the game and conflict resolution, we're going to have to do on our own. And I'm particularly interested in this Pioneer terraforming situation. We'll get into that as the gameplay goes on and as time allows, but we will be starting with the HQ and Bosata will already be there, which for me takes out a lot of the early game frustration and tedious nature of some of that. Now, as far as research, we do not have anything unlocked. We'll have to do all of that on our own. So for me, this is going to be a lot of fun. Let's get started. All right, we have just spawned into the game. Again, we're here in Silent Witness, and you can see this place is uh, basically abandoned. There are a couple of stations. In fact, our HQ is over. In fact, I think it might be right over there. Um, 
but we do have a couple of, I see one right there, that's an accelerator. And then somewhere over here, oh, there we go. That's pretty close, I like that. That is another accelerator that we're gonna use because the first thing we need to do is get out of here. All right, so if I scroll out, here are here's the entire map. We do have that, but if you'll notice, um, there's nothing there. We have to discover it. So this is what is going to be so much fun early on. We have the groundwork laid for us, the foundation, but we gotta go get it. So we need to get over here to Silent Witness 1, which will connect us up to the superhighway. So we're gonna go ahead and get started again. This is one of the faster ships that I have ever uh, been able to pilot and my piloting skills are pretty terrible. So I will let you guys know that up front. All right, so let's go ahead yeah, I am definitely no pilot. Accelerator, silent witness, one. One, there we go, that's the one we want. So again, the one that we saw uh, that would be back behind us at this point, that's gonna take us to another silent witness uh, sector, but we don't, really, we don't really need it just yet. In fact, maybe ever, we'll have to see how it all turns out. All right, so let's go ahead and get through here. Entering and silent witness. There's where we want to be. There's the super highway. All right, so now the real question is can I get this thing slowed down before we get all the way there? Because once we hop on the super highway, that is going to be the key to so much discovery. All right, so you can see we're still already going way over. 5,000, now we've slowed it down to our cruising speed of 300 and, around 330 or so. So let's go ahead and hop on. It doesn't really matter to me which way we're going. Okay, never mind. Get back down on there. There we go. So now you can see the speed picks up considerably. So we're just gonna ride this for a little while. Entering system, a Tikva's choice. So I'm gonna apologize up front. You're gonna see some stuttering in the game, particularly as we continue on and the game develops, the universe develops and more ships and stations are built. Uh, I wish I could get rid of that, but I have found no way to do so. So I'm gonna try to minimize it as best I can. Uh, doing things like uh, minimizing the active radar that we're using. Uh, and also trying to stay in a separate system away from a lot of activity, which is not what I would prefer to do, but I think it will help out some with Entering the system. study. Argon Prime. Argon Prime. We're going to spend a lot of time here, particularly early on in the game. But yeah, the goal right now, we are in discovery mode. We want to discover the highways. We want to discover the jump gates. And... This is a crucial part of doing just that. Entering system, second contact. A lot of mining in second contact. The, what is it, three sectors, I believe, in second contact available. But you can see tons of mining opportunity here. Entering system, true sight. All right, now we're gonna get into seeing some of the additional factions within the game. Again, if you're new to X4 Foundations, uh, this is one of the basic steps that you'll need to take some just exploration to get you started. But again, Entering there are gonna system. be some things that we're Holy gonna skip vision. early on. So if you're interested in those, by all means, check out my previous gameplay where we do a lot of the early game stuff that you're not gonna see here in this playthrough. I am very excited about the upcoming DLC of Tides of Avarice. So I am very interested in getting as far as we can Entering into the system. gameplay before that release so that we can take this existing save, hopefully, and transfer it right into the new DLC action. Entering system, Ias Mists. All right, so again, this is going to give us so much information. Now, here in just a moment, uh, once we get on by this uh, and get back to where we started in Silent Witness on the highway, we'll pull up the map and we'll see just what we've uncovered so far. Entering, 
Entering system. Unholy retribution. All right, so a lot of factions to deal with in the game. Now, had we been able to use uh, the split DLC, that would have added even more factions and even more sectors to the game. But Entering again, system. Trinity Sanctum. For the purposes of my CPU and uh, the longevity thereof, then we're going to leave that one out and just focus on the Cradle of Humanity. Now, the interesting thing with Cradle Entering of Humanity system. Bright promise. is that the Terran faction is very hard to get to know. Like, they restrict everything. Your access, your uh, access system. to their technology, Profit their Center sectors, Alpha. all of those things. So it's going to take us a while before we can really become friends with them and really gain access to their technology, but I am looking forward to doing just that, particularly being able to uh, get into Terran space and uh, see what kind of stations we can build, what kind of trading we can do there. But they're definitely not going to be the easiest faction to get to know. Entering system, Silent Witness. All right, here we are, Silent Witness. Let's go ahead and hop back out. I'm going to go ahead and just get us stopped here. So let's pull up that map, and there you see it. So we've already got a couple of things unlocked here, some connections, and these are essential connections. So what I'm going to do as we finish up today's video is I am going to head up, head over to the Argon Wharf, uh, and we're going to get some satellites, and we're going to start putting some satellites down. All right, so let's go ahead, and we are going to start guidance to this object and now we're going to hop back down into the highway now that we have seen this entire highway let's make our way back over to Argon Prime buy some satellites and I will take care of that and you guys will get to see a very different looking map when we come together next entering system a take vast choice We'll actually have some uh, stations on the map, as well as a lot of the connections and highway and uh, gate network. But you can already see there, you can see the stations that are in the surrounding area of the highway, as well as the gate network as well. But keep in mind, because of the way the active radar works in the game, we have a very limited distance that we can see until we peel back the fog of war. All right, Entering here we are. System. There is the Argon Wharf there on the left, so we'll go ahead and hop out. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see it wanted us to stay on, apparently, stay on the uh, highway for just a little bit longer before we get over here. Now, uh, this might be a little bit challenging trying to land this thing because I don't think it has the landing assist on it, the docking module help. Uh, so yeah, this could, be, could get really, really fun here. Uh, hilarious for you guys, <laughs> but very tedious uh, for me. So let's hop over. Uh, consider deploying a satellite here. Yes, that is a very helpful tip. We're going to be deploying a lot of satellites. All right, so this shape uh, of the ship is a little bit odd, so that's only going to make things more fun for me. All right, here we go. Docking granted. All right, let's see what we got. All right, so here's our interface. So we're going to try to get, let me go ahead and stop it here. Again, for those of you who might be unfamiliar, the reticle in the center, I'm going to try to line that up with the reticle here. And then I'm going to try to get our ship right in between these green arrows. So we're going to do this very slowly. And I'm going to start bringing the ship down a little bit. All right, there we go. You can see we're getting very close. It's actually in the green. I'm trying to get as close as I can to right in between those. 
we'll drop down and there we go we have been landed now the interesting thing about this ship docked. and let me go ahead and hop out welcome now we'll be hiring a uh a driver here momentarily for the ship but the interesting thing about this design is you see how tall this thing is but yet you as the pilot are right down on the bottom so that is a very unique style of ship something i hadn't seen before because i'm not familiar with the previous x games where you know we've seen a lot of this stuff before at least similar designs but there it is so now let's take a look at the satellites that we're going to be using all right so we're going to get back over here of course it already wants us to hire a captain uh, and essentially that is a pilot but we're going to do better than that so we're going to right click over here on the wharf and we're going to do an upgrade there is no pilot on the ship okay Attention so you're going to make me do it that way or are you going to let me yeah there we go we can come into the dock interactions and do it from there all right so these are the existing stats of our ship for me most importantly is the speed 344 and then you have your travel speed at 6500 now i am excited to possibly change out the engine in this thing to one of the other races because they, we could make it even faster and yes you can mismatch the uh the different factions so right here we're only going to be able to use the argon faction uh, equipment but if we go to different places we can definitely take advantage of the strengths and weaknesses of the different factions so for right now what we care about are the consumables as well as the crew so consumables what i'm interested in are satellites and survey units so these are part of a mod i'll be using multiple mods throughout this gameplay the mods quite frankly make this game playable for me without the mods i'm not sure my sanity would last very long the ai have a lot of uh, let's say crazy activities that they do uh, and we'll see those at various times I'm sure during uh, the series but the mods help out with some of that and provide some areas of gameplay that really should have been there by default in my opinion anyway but are not so the mods will fill the gap and this is one of those called sector satellites again very easy to find very popular mod so sector satellites and it's going to give us an advanced satellite, hostile detection satellite, interdiction, probe, resource survey unit, and then a survey unit, as well as a few other things, I'm sure, down in here that we'll not be using. What we want are hostile detection satellites and survey units. And here's what those are going to do for us. We'll start out with the hostile detection satellites. We'll be able to drop those in a sector, and as the name of the mod would suggest, of sector satellites, it will detect all of the stations within that sector and keep their uh, prices updated. So whenever we get started trading, which will be very soon, then we will have the pricing information we need in order to make those trades and start building our reputation. The survey unit will be crucial because it will allow us to not only know about satellites, or excuse me, the stations within a sector, but also uncover the jump gates as well as the highways for us. So this is really going to go a long way, but by default, we don't have any of this information. We're going to have to spend some of our initial credits and get that information. So that's what I'm going to be doing offline. When we come back next time, the map is going to look very different. It's going to have a lot more connections in there, and we might even have a few ships to get started earning a little bit of money. So our journey has already started and I believe gotten off to a good start. So much more to do and so little time to get it all done. That's going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for joining me and stick around for more X4 Foundations.